Welcome back to day 139 and 140 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. Today is our catch-up day. And so today we're going to do a brief recap of what we've read so far. And then we're going to discuss one of the reflection questions from this week. So, all right, let's dive into the video. So this week we read Job chapters 40 to Psalms 22. And so we read a lot of uh, Psalms this week. And so in Job chapter 40, we are wrapping up the book of Job and Job chapters 40 and 42. Um, we see God finally responding to Job. Remember, Job has been requesting an audience with God to defend himself, um, defend his innocence. And God finally shows up in the whirlwind and he's asking Job, you know, where were you when you did these things? Do you know about these animals and how I care for them. Can you do this and do that? And so God is just kind of questioning Job and asking Job, you know, well, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Like, can you tell me when the, the deer has her baby and who can um, drag up the Leviathan? And, all, and God is just asking all of these questions of Job, demonstrating God's sovereignty in all of the world and in our situations. And so Job just kind of like repents before God and is like, you know what, God, I'm going to shut my mouth and not say anything. And then God turns to Job's friends and is like, and you guys didn't represent me well either. You didn't um, talk justly and right, rightly before me. So I'm going to have, I need you guys to bring these um, sacrifices to Job and Job is going to sacrifice on your behalf. And so once Job sacrificed for his friends, then God restored everything that Job had lost. He got back all of his physical wealth. Um, he was no longer a scorn to the community. It says that his family came and they supported him and they brought him gifts and things. And it also says that Job had seven sons and three daughters and that they were the most beautiful young ladies in the land. So despite Job's test and trial, God restored everything back to Job because Job was innocent and he remained faithful to God. He did not curse God like the enemy said, but he stayed faithful to God and he maintained his innocence before his friends. He didn't give in to the peer pressure and say, oh yeah, you know, maybe I really did sin. Maybe I did mess up, but he maintained his innocence before his friends. But all right. From there, we jumped into the book of Psalms and the book of Psalms is actually divided up into three separate books. So there's book one, book two, and book three. And so in this week's reading, we read book one of Psalms and most of those Psalms are from um, King David. They are Psalms of King David. When we get into book two, we start getting into some of the Psalms of um, Korah, the Psalms of Asaph. And we get more into the songs that were actually written for the uh, Levites to sing during uh, during worship in the temple or sing before the king. So we get into a little of that in book two. So that is kind of our recap of the book of Psalms. Most of them, like I said, are written by King David. Do you find prayers from King David in there? We find laments from King David in there. And we find praises to God from King David in there. So there was a lot of songs from King David and what we read in those first 22 chapters. But let's dive into our reflection. And remember, this week is the only week where there is actually a reflection page for you guys to download and read. Um, so this week's reflection comes from day 137, where we read Psalms 13 through 17. And it says, Reflect on the psalmist's cry for God's attention and his longing for deliverance from despair in Psalms 13. How does the psalmist's honesty in expressing his feelings of abandonment challenge you to bring your own struggles and doubts before God in prayer? Amen. And I really like this question because I feel a lot of the times I know with myself as a believer, um, sometimes I feel when I go to God in prayer that I can't be honest with God, which is silly because he knows everything. He already knows what we're feeling. He already knows, you know, what the stress that we're under, the doubt that we're facing. And so I really like that song because David is really crying out to God. And he's like, you know, God, don't abandon me. Don't leave me. Um, 
you know, and he's just really crying out his honest emotions and feelings to God. And God doesn't have a problem with uh, us doing that because he already knows. So I think a lot of times as believers, we try to make it seem like we can't go to God and be honest with God about how we feel or about what we think about a situation when really he is the only one that we can truly be honest with. And so I encourage you on today that the next time that you're going through something, you're going through a situation, just remember David's example and be honest with God. You know, if there's something going on with your marriage, something going on with your finances, you know, something going on with your friends and family, some kind of drama that's happening, you can go to God. Somebody's talking about you, bad mouthing you, and you know that you're innocent. Take it to the Lord in prayer and be honest with your feelings. You know, say, God, you know, I don't understand. I feel like you're abandoning me. I don't understand why these people are talking about me, why they're attacking me. I've done nothing but good to them. I haven't harmed them. I haven't, and just cry out to God because he understands. You can tell him, God, I don't understand. I don't understand why this is happening. I don't feel like I deserve this. Like we can just be so honest and open with God. And I believe that if we would do that as men and women of God, we wouldn't have to carry around so much stress and baggage because we feel like we can't come to God. I mean, yeah, we don't want to be completely disrespectful because he is God. But like I said, God wants us to be honest with him. He wants us to come before him and to just lay it all down at his feet because he can handle it. He gave us all of those emotions. So why do we think that he can't handle those emotions if we pour those emotions out to him? But all right, guys, that is the end of our catch up day for today. Um, I hope that you got something out of the reflection question for today. Like I said, the next time you pray, be open and honest with God and watch God work in your life when you're open and honest with him. But all right, guys, have a blessed day. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button so that you can get the notification for day 141 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. All right, everyone, stay blessed. Bye.